I went to university on a GI Bill like about everybody at my age at that time did. And I was always interested in art and I always thought that I could do pretty good in art. And so I started as an advertising design major. I realized that really wasn't for me, although I could do it, I just wasn't interested. But during my career, I was asked, I was told I had to take a, quote, crafts class. Mm -hmm. And that introduced me to the potter's wheel and my life hasn't been changed since then. I couldn't get over how this thing, as ancient as it was, was so exciting to do. In fact, since I've been making pots for over about 62 years now, I can't imagine anything more magical than taking this dumb piece of clay and making it rise up and just work magic with it. It will never, never cease to amaze me and to, I enjoy it very much. The classes in uh, the craft classes I took in the university were directly related to art education. That's the way they included them in the, the uh, curriculum. So what I did, I took an art education uh, bachelor degree and that gave me opportunity to do the crafts classes. I then uh, graduated from the University of Denver in 1949. In 1949, I moved to California. I had a bachelor's degree. I had a new wife, a barber, a painter, and I had a job and which was in a public school system. Three years later, I was asked if I would like to come to teach at the University of Illinois. I believe this is 1952. I, I moved my family. At that time, we had one child, my family to uh, Champaign-Urbana, and I started teaching at the University of Illinois. 37 years later, I retired and my wife and I moved to Santa Maria, California and set up a studio. She was a painter and I set up half studio painter and making pots. I decided at that time to limit myself very much to a very, very select thing to make and I chose little tiny teapots. The reason I chose this is because I wanted to make everything myself in my studio. I didn't want to have a big operation. I wanted to have something I could show. I decided to work at Cone 5 and I use uh, commercial stuff, commercial glazes and, and materials, except that I alter them considerably uh, before they uh, get into the kiln. I now have a quote, a line of teapots and I have a probably uh, 20 or 30 basic designs, but each one is still made by itself, for itself. In an art history class, I was introduced to the times of the 18th century, when the grand palaces existed, when uh, kings and queens and knights and dukes and duchesses existed, and with the idea that they were, it just, I couldn't believe it. They were taking a simple, beautiful piece of oriental porcelain and adding a, a wild rococo or baroque top, bottom, uh, foot, big, gorgeous handles, and I could not believe this. This was a whole new way of thinking. If I were, if that existed today, they would probably be labeled multimedia. But that, that's what started me on it, and it's, the specific name is called Ormalu, the adding of a, a decorative device to a particular item. And what I have done is add a decorative device into feet, lids, handles, spouts. And this also started me on the use of acrylic as a medium to make my handles. It would seem after all, this, all these years that I would kind of uh, lose interest, but I find when I go to the studio, my mind is still 
very, very active to see if I can't create something that is totally me and uh, using the materials I have. Some of the things I have in this show uh, relate to that particular thing with the handles are almost wild. The handles are uh, uh, still very usable. The handles are very, but still uh, so wild that you think, wow, is that a handle? Well, the thing I think that uh, I have going for me is nobody that in my knowledge makes things like I do. There are schools of salt, there are schools of, of uh, all kinds of ash glazes, and I hopefully think I'm the school of me.